Well, hello everybody, this is Tim Green with Rattle Magazine. Welcome to Poets Respond Live, the Sunday morning news show exploring current events through the powerful lens of poetry. Now, um, if you don't know, if you haven't watched an episode yet, this is mostly an open mic show. And um, how you participate is, um, yeah, that's a poet in just a little bit. How you participate is um, send a uh, Skype message to, to me, a chat message over Skype to Rattle Poetry, all one word. And um, if you do that, um, you'll show up on my chat window. I will say, accept your chat request or whatever. Then I will call you when the time is right. The other option is to call our phone number, 818-850-7727. Um, let it ring a few times so you show up on my call list again, and I will call you back when the time is right. Um, and if you uh, submitted your poem that you would like to share to Poets Respond, I can put it up on screen as you read. Uh, but if you'd like to read anything that you didn't submit to Poets Respond, um, that's really easy to do too. All you do is send it over email to openmike at rattle.com. Uh, all one word, openmike at rattle.com. And I can uh, show it on the screen that way. So uh, there's two ways to share your poems with us. Either submit them the previous week or uh, email them to openmike at rattle.com. I should probably put that email address up on the, um, on the screen. But uh, maybe next week. Um, anyway, so we have two poems uh, to start off with this week that we published. Um, first one is Jeffrey Philp. Uh, this is a fragment from the quilt. And um, Jeffrey can join us by phone. So let's call him up now. And then we also have uh, um, um, Marka, Marka Riffett. Um, she's here too. And we're going to call her on Skype after Jeffrey. And then we'll open it up to open lines and share any poems you'd like to read. So um, here we go. Let's call up... Uh, Jeffrey right now. And this was his poem from Saturday. Uh, I'll put it on screen for you. This is Fragment of the Quilt. Hey, Jeffrey, this is Tim with Rattle. Hey, Tim, how are you? I'm good. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so so you're call I'm, I'm calling you in Florida, right? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, how are things? Three hours behind. Yeah, how are things there in Florida? Ah, uh, well, here it's 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 pre in this neighborhood it's pretty calm. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's primarily um, older, mm -hmm. so we wear our masks. Yeah. We're not like those young people hanging out at bars. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We're uh, <laughs> you know, here in Southern California. We are in a surge right now, and we've we've kind of locked ourselves back down to uh, this is not a virus that, that I want. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. So, so your poem that you shared this week or, uh, was yesterday's poem, a, f a fragment of the yes. quilt. Do you want to explain a little bit yes. what that was about? It was a really strange story to me. I, I try to. Um, I don't really. I don't. We don't have TV. <laughs> And um, I, I don't watch the news very much. So it was strange reading it and, and trying to figure out, like, what were they even thinking using this symbolism in an ad? Um, so do you want to tell a little bit about what, what you were writing about? Well, it's, it's, it's one of those situations where it's, it's just uh, 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 an incredible confluence of events. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was writing uh, a piece for uh, another magazine, Prose, it was called My First Time, mm -hmm. uh, and it was about the, the first time I got published. So, so I was going back. So I was living in a, a sort of 18-year-old mind, mm -hmm. and at the same time, uh, I saw I, th there was this, um, I, I saw the news flash, and um, I was like, so, so, so that was in the back of my, that was in the back of my head. Uh, you know this eighteen year old looking at this this uh this news report right mm -hmm. and i was just i was just okay and and so immediately what happened was um uh, you know the, the the white house was claiming ignorance of the of the uh, of the uh what the symbol meant and everything else mm -hmm. But so, so just it, to, it, to it, set, it, it, set it up for everybody, this was these were ads because I don't know if everybody heard the story. They're, it was a tweet. It was a, it was a retweet from the president. Oh, I think it was. Um, um, there were there were a bunch of um, Facebook ads though too that used this um, yes, the upside yes, down triangle. Yes. So I think I, I read in the article that you shared. Maybe I could put that up really quick. But there yes, were eighty yes. 
um, 80 different uses of this. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so immediately, I mean, it 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 first hit me as 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 a political dissident, you know. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing, uh, and, and and I real I recognized it immediately as falling into that whole category of of Nazi propaganda, which was which was quite effective, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you want to, do you want to read the poem? Or, or, or you know, uh, say what you will about the Nazis. They were extremely good at propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they definitely and, they, they invented it, <laughs> practically. Yeah. So, so when I saw that, I, I, it, it, it immediately hit me. As, 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 I, I would have been one of those people gathered up as a, a political dissident. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a concentration camp, and then and then uh, the other thing that was happening was um, about two years ago. I discovered I discovered that my grandmother was Jewish. Mm-hmm. Uh, she died when my mother was six. Mm-hmm. So I've been getting all of these uh, "Welcome to the Tribe." Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, emails and messages. So, so 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 there was that. Uh, and I've lived 60 years of my life as a black man uh, mm-hmm. from Jamaica. So, so, so immediately it generated all of these, uh, all of these ideas about the different badges that um, the Nazis used in the concentration camp. Yeah. But the last one, mm-hmm. the last one, what, what, what made me, um, actually got stuck in the middle of the poem because I realized um, I was lying or I didn't want to tell the part of my story in, in which I was a Jehovah's Witness. Mm. So I got stuck on the poem for about, for about two days. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I was just, I was just, uh, no, that, that, you know, that, that, that's a part of my life that I don't want to retell, relive, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it got stuck until finally I just went, I just let loose. So then once, once I said purple with Jehovah's Witnesses, then immediately I, said, I, I, I did the research and came upon the story of Wolfgang Kusero. And once I hit that story, I now had the way out of the, the, the poem. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, uh, so, so, yeah, I, I knew, you know, one, once I had the entry point, which was sometimes I wonder which badge, mm-hmm. but, but it, I mean, it went as far as yellow star and that was it, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> yeah. and it was going up, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it didn't happen until about the 10th draft. I mean, and I mean, I, I will... One of the ways that I've used is, I mean, I, I write it by hand, and then I um, read it into a microphone, uh, uh, turn it into text, and then I read it on my iPad, and then I read it on the, my computer screen, and I read it on paper. So, you know, I was just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, mm-hmm. until I hit the purple. And that one, it, it, it just opened up, and I knew exactly this is where it needs to go. And, and, and I just went with it after that. And then of course, drafting again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it worked really well. Like you pulled, you pulled everything together in such a way that, um, and I think going, you know, going for that place you didn't, you know, want to go to at first is usually the way to get to a poem. That's usually the, the itch of it or whatever. And, um, I don't know when I read these, I, um, I, I end up publishing really the most memorable one. And this one just stuck with me, you know, through the whole reading of several hundred poems on Saturday. I just kept thinking Thank back you. about this one. So um, I think it worked really well. Thanks so much for putting it together and sharing it for us. Do you want to read it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a fragment of the quilt. Sometimes I wonder which badge I'd have been assigned. Red for political dissidents. Black 
for the Rhineland bastards, a yellow star as a Michelin second degree, or purple with the other Jehovah's Witnesses. Although they were beaten with clubs on the other side of the Atlantic, in Claymath Falls, Oregon, because they refused to salute the American flag or to kill their brothers and sisters in Germany, who went to church on Sundays wearing belts, got mit uns, and murdered the helpless on Monday. Would I have had the courage of Wolfgang, who before he surrendered to the fate the Fuhrer had designed for conscientious objectives, could write to his family, we know our faith will be victorious, and repeated Psalm 83 under his breath, O God, do not be silent, do not keep quiet or still. Before he stepped into the courtyard of the Brandenburg Penitentiary to face the guillotine's blade. Thanks so much. That was uh, Jeffrey Philp once again reading a fragment of the quilt. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and sharing that for this morning, Jeffrey. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for publishing the poem. This was this was fun. Yeah, thank you. Well, def- <laughs> definitely my pleasure. Hope you keep sending it in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Take have a have, yourself, yeah. yeah. Have a good rest of the day. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Yes, that was Jeffrey Philp reading a fragment of the quilt, and um, um, I, I forgot to say um, if you. Turn the music down. If you um, enjoy these uh, these uh, podcast episodes of Battlecast, please do click the uh, like button and make sure you're subscribed. Click the bell. If you're watching on Facebook, um, uh, make sure you're following and, and you click on see first and turn on notifications so you get all of our broadcasts and share it with your friends. That's all we ask. But really, um, the way the computers work, you really need to be clicking on stuff and uh, leaving comments and things like that to tell the computers that um, you want to share this with all of our other followers who don't get it immediately in their feeds automatically so that's really appreciated if you could click that like button and subscribe and click the bell and whatnot um now our other poet um today's poem um pull that up too was uh, was uh marco riffett and uh, it was philomel or too much of a good thing and uh, let's give her a call now uh she's she's in scotland so we have a uh, florida and scotland for the two poems this week Hello, Marco. Can you hear me? I can indeed. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good to see you. Let me pull you in so everybody else can too. How, how are you doing today? And you're calling from or calling from Scotland. Yes, I am. Hello from ben, Bonnie, Scotland. And uh, as we say in the northeast of Scotland, fit like, which is uh, Doric. <laughs> that's the local dialect for how are you? Wonderful. Well, yeah. So, how, <laughs> I, I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. It's so great to see you and so great for you to share this poem. I, I just loved, um, I don't know if everybody has a chance to read it yet because it just appeared on, on the website recently, but um, I just love the musicality of this. It's about, um, and, and I assume it's a true story about the, um, a true story. <laughs> <laughs> about a, a song thrush uh, right on the fence outside your window who's kind of camped out there. <laughs> yes. And um, it just wasn't moving. Um, mm-hmm. And normally a, a thrush, a song thrush uh, is, is greatly admired. It's a beautiful songster. Um, it's called, uh, the Latin name is Turdus Philomelus, which is a uh, Philomela was in Greek mythology, uh, a woman who was turned into a nightingale. So that's a different bird altogether. Mm-hmm. But essentially, this is a songbird that everyone has admired over the centuries. And, uh, you know, if you're passing by and you hear a thrush, you think, oh, how beautiful. But when it's there, night mm. after night, day <laughs> after day, <laughs> please just go somewhere else. Yeah. But of course, it had no competition. Mm-hmm. There was no sound of the trains, no trucks, no commuters. Everything was lovely and quiet. And obviously, it just like the trees near me and just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. And you, and you tied it to a story um, about... Um, I don't have the link here. I guess I didn't add the link into it, but um, I'll have to do that after we finish the show. But um, you, you tied it to a story about um, 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 scientists researching the way that, that the coronavirus has affected animals. Is there anything you can say about that? Yes. Um, well, it's they're calling it the human pause. So uh, uh, That's the word a I was moment. looking for. Yeah, Correct, yes. Yeah. 
or an, also an anthropause, mm -hmm. uh, which sounds like a heavy metal band. Um, but yes, it's the idea of what can be researched uh, into the effects on animals. I mean, we've heard about animals in zoos missing the human visitors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard about animals going really, getting quite aggressive because they're used to being fed. Mm -hmm. So um, monkeys and so on, um, seagulls, rats, suddenly all the uh, the lovely food that people would drop as they left, you know, the, the pizza hut or, you know, the... Uh, their sandwiches, their bagels, all these things just got dropped and lovely, we'll have some of that. But the animal kingdom has had to adapt uh, quite extraordinarily. And there are tales of uh, dolphins turning up in uh, what used to be busy harbours. I think there was an example in Trieste in Italy. So the researchers want to see what's happening in all, mm -hmm. in all ways, the, the good and, and the not so good, so that, um, as they put it, ultimately, they'd be able to provide guidance on, as they phrase it, how best to share space on mm -hmm. this crowded planet. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, I read about it um, on the, at the BBC website. And uh, if, you, if you search Human Pause mm -hmm. BBC, uh, you'll be able to get to the actual the academic paper that's been put together. Yeah, uh, I'll, for this I'll, project. Yeah, I'll add a link as soon as the show's done. Uh, usually, I, you know, I put the link in the note, but then I didn't this week. But um, but yeah, here we have um, it, it's actually sort of ties in today because right after the show, I'm gonna go take my dog to a rattlesnake aversion training because we hike a lot oh, around wow. our town in the woods, and uh, usually I'm not too worried about you know rattlesnakes, but um, there aren't as many people in the woods, and they are all over the place this year. They're not oh, wow. avoiding, yeah. Like I drove home, uh, you know, up our mountain a couple a couple days ago, and a three in the road, just on the side of the road, just on the road up into town. Which I've, it's rare you see one, and uh, they're just all over right now. So, um, so right after we're doing the, you know, teaching him to smell and, and teaching him to avoid them, so he can he can <laughs> protect me too. He can let me know <laughs> if there's one around, because um, I didn't grow up in a place with rattlesnakes, and they, I, I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. But um, well, it's, it's very safe here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's just though that um, it does seem like there's more nature, and you know, we live in a small town in the woods, and and without as many hikers and as much, as much traffic, um, you know, animals are coming out more here. It's actually noticeable. I don't think it's just a uh, coincidence. Yes, there the, the does seem to be the sense of safety that you can go further, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I mean, certainly, I I really was delighted to to see the thrush. But I think also generally for for those of us who've been able to get out uh, during the coronavirus uh, restrictions, which actually continue here in Scotland at the moment, we are really supposed to stay within a five mile limit mm -hmm. of where we live. Mm -hmm. um, but more and more people have been noticing nature, um, and that there have been fewer, or people have chosen to just put aside the distractions that they had before if they can. Uh, and enjoy nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, whether it's seeing all the weeds that have sprung up in places you've never seen weeds before, or thinking how pretty they actually look, or, and, and this is very striking, the number of insects, uh, bees as well, hmm. um, have suddenly had this great banquet hmm. open up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because uh, none of the weeding's getting done. <laughs> Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, well, do you want to share this poem? And, and everybody listening, listen to these uh, internal rhymes as we go. I think almost every line has a really great internal rhyme in it, which sort of echoes the songbird, <laughs> which is what I lo loved about this poem. So go ahead and read it whenever you're ready. Okay, that's it. Right, so the title is Philomel, or Too Much of a Good Thing. Ravi Shankar has arrived, and I am charmed at first, such inventiveness and stamina. But this avian Miles Davis has set up stage by my garden fence and will not stop. From red rim dawn to yawning blue night, the air is corona clear, human competition banished. Um Kaltum in a tawny feather gown is lifting a creamy breast for the longest song all the way to the gods and beyond. The driving rhythms of Anna Meredith, percussive riffs, a ginger baker on a branch, untiring, unrelenting, unremitting, primal desire. I am not the one you want, this tin-eared audience of one. I'm fast lost without the old 4-4, the three-minute melodies, 
If only I could find a female, a fecund thrush to still your throat at last. I would ply her with the finest beetles, worms and berries, and she would judge your endless composition and my exhausted wish. Deign to be your mate and make a nest far, far away. And I and my tin ears will rest again. Very nice. Thanks so much. That was Mark Riff, Riff, uh, Riffit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> Riffit. Uh, reading Philomel or Too Much of a Good Thing. And um, and I love the, the sort of humorous turn at the end, too. That was just a, a really fun poem. Thanks so much for sharing it, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good rest of your evening there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so um, let's see. So now, now we're open up to the open lines. Um, and we have a bunch of people who have asked to join. And I start with Mark Allen DiMartino. Because he is in Italy, and it's late late for him. I think he's waiting to um, go to bed, perhaps. But let's get him first. All right, it's not that late in Italy, is it? I don't know. I'm confused. But anyway, let's do Mark, Mark Martino. I guess it would be like 7 or 8. But then what time is it in India? I thought it was only 8 in India to reach oh. is currently unavailable we will try let's see oh you know what um yeah so up oh, here he comes yeah for some reason mark can't answer his phone he's at his his work hey mark you there hi tim hey great to see you uh, how you doing today um i'm all right i'm not sure if there's a little bit of echo, or what's going on? Um, I see. Oh, do I have to turn off my YouTube here? Oh yeah, turn off your YouTube. I should tell. Uh, I should tell everybody that. Yeah. I haven't done this before in the open mic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So turn off your enough. YouTube. Yeah, uh, and that'll give you more bandwidth too. So just click right out of that box and go back later. Okay, um, good. Yeah, yeah. I should let everybody know. Um, yeah, so so we call you on Skype, um, and and it's completely different from YouTube, and it's also about thirty seconds or so ahead. So uh, when you when I call you, uh, make sure you turn off your YouTube. Um, if you're on the phone, you can just mute it. But if you if you're um, over Skype, you don't want to use your bandwidth either. So um, so just click out of that box completely and then and then come back to it. But um, yeah, so so you were the guest on the Rattlecast just a couple of weeks ago from Italy, and, and you're calling from your office again. I see. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, it's really really hot here. Is it? Did some yard work, and yeah, it's just scorching. It's six o'clock, six thirty in the afternoon, and uh, it's too hot to be outside. Oh still. wow, really? So I was thinking of going to the park today to get some exercise, but I'm going to go after uh -huh. this, you know, before dinner because it's just too hot to be out. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a northerner, and uh, I do not like the heat down here in Southern California, so I kind of, we hunker down all day, too. Um, so your poem was really cool. It was Red Planet Blues, which is a is an interesting sonnet form. And uh, do, what do you want to say about the, the article that it was about, the, the quest for uh, heavenly well, truth? He, I mean, it was strange because I just kind of stumbled on it, and, um, you know, I like a lot of people who, you know, send poems um, every week or, you know, a couple, every couple of weeks or whatever. Uh, I'm probably I'm pretty tired of the cycles, you know, the news mm -hmm. cycle, the Trump news cycles that went on for too, too long. Has. And I'm just sick of writing about American politics and trying to make sense of it. I have nothing to say. <laughs> um, the coronavirus thing, the lockdown thing, all of that is just, you know, after you do it for a couple of weeks, you just, you're exhausted. Yeah. Something to well, say. let me jump in and, and tell everybody watching, I'm feeling the same mm -hmm. way. So I'm really looking for poems that are not about the coronavirus or about Trump. Well, tr I'm so sick of Trump. Uh, if yeah, I never I see the word like Trump it. again in a poem, I will be happy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, so I can't read them and I can't yeah, write them. But I mean, I, you know, everybody should write about what they're compelled to write about. And we, you know, publish the most interesting things we get. So if we publish poems with with Trump and the coronavirus in them, that's that's fine too. But I'm especially looking for poems that are that are about different things. So I, I love this this article too um, that you wrote about. Yeah, I just can't I can't yeah. do it anymore. I don't find inspiration. You know, and again, I think that uh, I think I heard it on was it Bob Hickox's Rattlecast? And he said that he it's hard to write about politics because you already have a judgment in your brain. Mm -hmm. You say I'm going to write about Mitch McConnell, but you know you're going to you know condemn. It's just boring. You know, yeah, I'll create yeah. another Dante in Circle of mm -hmm. Hell. But who cares? And, and if you, you look know? at the poems we published um, about these topics, um, we always we only publish poems that find some kind of angle or surprise in them. 
you know, <laughs> and, and most of the submissions just they don't. They knew what they were telling you ahead of time, so it's more rhetoric than poetry. I mean, frankly, it's well. So I'm yeah. like, I, I was dealing with this article, and uh, I just, you know, sometimes I read Google News or whatever, and I come across some science news because, like you, I like, I like science, and I try to keep semi up to date with things that are going on, but just for inspiration, because I think it's an inspiring thing to write mm -hmm. about. I think that's where ideas come from for me a lot of the times. And I found this article about China's um, Mars program, and they want to send. Uh, um, a spaceship to Mars with a rover and an orbiter and all that kind of stuff. And what really struck me was the name that they gave to their, I guess it's the, the, the set of spaceships. Um, I can't even remember what it was called from the article in Chinese, but apparently it means in English, quest for heavenly truth. It's T-O-N-1. That's it. And, you know, I don't know Chinese, but uh, I thought it was beautiful and audacious and um, it just made me want to write about it. And so, you know, sometimes like a crastic, I use an article or something I read, even if it's maybe a, a book I'm reading or a poem I'm reading, you take a line that, you know, you think is interesting and just kind of build around that. You know, Marion Moore did that with her poetry. And sometimes I find that's a really good way to start a poem mm -hmm. and just see what happens and see if something is there. And so I found that it seemed like something was there. And uh, as I wrote, it kind of absorbed other things that I was reading and that were in my sort of peripheral vision. And uh, so you get a couple of quotes in the poem from here and there that aren't directly related, obviously, to the story. But, you know, poetry just, you know, does absorb anything that's in its um, field of vision when you're writing it. Mm -hmm. And so I just go with that. You know, I don't try to edit it out or try and find the logic. So it really isn't directly about uh, China or the Chinese space program, but it uh, uses the article as a, a lifting mm -hmm. off point. And uh, some of the language from the article ends up in the poem too. A couple of words here and there that I thought were sort of poetically uh, powerful. And uh, it's an English sonnet. That is, it's rhymed A, B, A, B. Uh, and there's a couplet at the end, but it's not metered. Mm -hmm doesn't follow any sort of iambic pentameter. So the lines are long and short and irregular. Um, and I think it's fun to do because, you know, as I explained once, I'm kind of getting bored writing regular mm -hmm. sonnets. And so playing around with the form is fun as well. Yeah, I really, I really so enjoyed the form. It just mm -hmm. happened. Why don't you go ahead, and, go ahead and read it? Sure. All right, great. It's called Red Planet Blues. Uh, the title actually is a riff um, on a Miles Davis song from his album, Get Up With It, called Red China Blues. Hmm. If this is a quest for heavenly truth as advertised, we still have a long way to go. Caruth wrote, surely we know our darkling sure. Okay, maybe we do, but how do we know we know? Easy answer, we don't. De Quincey waded through an Iliad of woe, his phrase, but still, couldn't pay the rent. A parachute won't get you through an atmosphere. You need retro rockets to slow your descent. Call it prudence. You can't piggyback forever on a Russian steed or dangle your legs over a fence, watching stars fall into the fathomless black hole of late stage capitalism. Failure, Beecher said is a school. Excellent. I love that last line. I never heard that quote before. Failure is a school. Um, well, it's a funny thing because I came up with this, um, the phrase failure is a school. Mm -hmm. I was playing around with things and I thought, you know, I wonder if anybody ever said uh -huh. that. I didn't know. And I thought it couldn't be original, obviously. So, and I, I researched it and I found that um, Henry Ward Beecher, mm -hmm. I think it was, um, who was uh, an abolitionist from the 19th century, said yeah. that. And I said, okay, well, there it goes. You know, that's, that's the way the poem kind of accretes, yeah, yeah. right? Just grabs a piece from here and there and, and makes something kind of interesting for yeah, me. Yeah, awesome. That's a good one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thanks so much for sharing it, Mark. <laughs> it I, I thought it was a thanks, good Yeah, I liked it a lot. And uh, those two poems before were fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's been a really good week for poems. I think we're going to keep seeing that as the uh, open mic goes on. It was, it was one of those weeks I really enjoyed reading the submissions. So, um, yeah, thanks, okay. thanks for sharing yours. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's see. Um, who do we have up next? We got. Um, let's go over to. I think. Uh, Probobasic. 
if it works. Hello, this is Tim with Rattle. Can you hear me? Hello, I see you. Oh, uh, I'm... yeah, yeah, this is probably here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us. Let me pull you in so everybody else can see you as well. Uh, yeah. And this is Probal. Is it okay now? Yeah, we're, you're good. You're good. Uh, where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm from India. I'm from West Bengal, state of West Bengal, mm -hmm. India. Ah, and, and um, what did you write about this week? Yeah, I write about a point, uh, the time we're living in, mm -hmm. uh, this lockdown, this social distancing. Actually, in India, we, were, we think we are one of the first countries to impose lockdown. I think from the uh, March, third week of March, we're observing lockdown mm -hmm. and this wearing mask thing and social distancing. Mm -hmm. It's a poem about the thing, but we are observing for three months now. And we don't know how long this will continue. And I think I've seen, um, at least in the news reported here, that um, the cases are surging a little bit in India right now too, aren't they? Are they I, I, accelerating? Uh, yeah, yeah. When we start, just uh, I mean, less than hundred cases, and it's now we have crossed a million, almost close to a million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, here too, um, we kind of um, eased everything up, and uh, that was not the right thing to do. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, they say it's the same thing. Now we are not calling it lockdown. We are calling it an unlock one. Mm -hmm. We had four lockdown, and then we are not calling it unlock one. Yeah, so this unlocking process. Well, I have your poem is a placard, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and read it whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. My poem is social distancing. Yeah. So here I go. Okay. The title is social distancing. Oh, social distancing. On the, um, yeah. Distancing. Hmm, did you email it to me? I don't see it. I thought it was a placard. Yeah, yeah I, I made it. Hmm. Let's see. I'm not sure I can come. Let's see. Oops. Um, let me try to find it. Um, did you Did you submit it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, submit it. You mail me, you mail, you mail me back. Um, I'm you responded on. Oh, yeah, let me see. I, I have a poem called um, A Placard, but I don't have social distancing. Yeah, placard, I think I sent earlier. Mm -hmm. Can you read a placard? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I can read that. Okay, yeah, that'd be better, because that's the one I have that, that I can show. Yeah, sure. Okay. So go ahead with that whenever you're so, ready. Yeah, sure, sure. So I was ready with that social distancing thing. You asked me to read that card. Yeah. So give me a moment. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Yes, yeah, sorry for that. I can't find the social distancing. Yeah, I have a placard. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a placard. Yeah. I found it lying on the royal street. Hard, wood stamped, dumped. Laid my hands to help it on its feet. How did this happen? I asked. Once a piece of blank paper, that youthful, caring hand, paintbrush turned into a fearless scrapper, a resistance for rulers to crush. Tear gas, water cannons, bullets, the wrath of the throne placed high, him down to silence the place, all because they asked why. As I cleaned it off, the boot, the boot marks was of the dark, hateful trace. I retrieved a pair of round glasses, our very own, an old smiling face. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for, for uh, joining us and reading that. Sorry, sorry not to have the poem that you intended to read. Let me, uh, um, and so, so this was a different story. This was, um, oh, you know what? This was yeah, an I, older one. Yeah, I, yeah, this was from way back in um, December. Thousands of people have been arrested I, and at least yeah, 23 people I, have been I, killed I, in the last 15 no. days as police tried to quash widespread protests over a new citizenship law in India that grants citizenship to religious minorities, except Muslims, from neighboring countries. Um, signs carrying Mahatma Gandhi's image and words are one of the most common in the ongoing protest. One such placard lying on street after one protest really caught my eyes. And I write here from and for Gandhi's India. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, um, excellent poem. From, yeah, thank you. Thank you. yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. Um, hmm. 
let's see. We will call this, um, so let's try Nancy Liang. And hopefully we'll, Hello, this is Tim with the, uh, can you hear me and see me? Yes. Hello. Um, so Nancy Lang, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Perry, North Carolina. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm going to try to find your poem. Um, did you submit a poem to Poet Respond? Yes. Uh, the, it's, it's called Time and Antidote. Ah, okay. Time and Antidote. And is there anything you would like to say about um, what it's about? Yeah, um, I think I think quite a few poets have mentioned that we're now actually uh, experiencing experiencing the same thing. Sorry, I don't know what's what's wrong with. Um, you know, for for us here in North Carolina, similar to many uh, people in, in in many states, we have been in this uh, sheltering place mode for over a hundred days. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like one hundred days of solitude. Yeah. And um, I'm one of the, the, the lucky ones who, who, who can work from home, you know, but we, we had a virtual celebration of the 100 day of uh, working remotely. Uh, <laughs> so so th uh, this poem is about, you know, in the past, time always healed, right? Mm -hmm. um, we always relied on time as the final resort. Um, but this time, 100 days have passed, looks like it's not is not giving us the answer or solution uh, yet. Um, I actually first wrote this poem in Chinese and then mm. I translated it into English. So some of the rhythm probably was lost, mm. um, but I think the idea remains there. Do you think it's not too long? Could you read it in both? Oh, yeah, let me find the, the, the Chinese version. So give me yeah. one second. Yeah, sure, that'd be cool to hear. Yes. Um, the Chinese version is, is, is going to be one of my poems in, the, in my upcoming book to be published in Taiwan. Hmm. Um, yeah, I found the Chinese version as well. So I'm, I, I will read it in English first and then Chinese. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Time and Antidote. We used to rely on time to heal us. Blood stains faded. Salty tears were diluted. It never failed, this antidote of all the old wounds. Not too bitter, just a bit numbing. Close your eyes, bury your head in the sand dune. For even in the most passive resistance, we know there is still time, our last resort. But why, this time, that inflection point remains elusive? Plenty of time has elapsed. It only reminded us the solution was not found. The source of the sin was not identified. Yeah, thanks. So that's the English version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Chinese version. 时间与解药也还有时间 um, Are you still there? Oh, my call dropped, I think. Or my Skype froze. Oh, well, sorry we missed the very end of that. But, um... It was a great reading, and um, I think it was right about the end of the poem when the Skype froze. Um, but thanks so much for sharing that, um, both in English and in Chinese. Uh, once again, that was Nancy Liang um, from um, 
um, North Attleboro, Massachusetts, I think, or, or did she say North Carolina? Um, anyway, thanks so much for sharing that. I'm sorry the Skype froze. I don't know whose end it was on. Uh, we'll see in a second, though, if I try to call somebody else. Uh, let's see. Let's try this 805 number. The 805 number is ringing. Mm. Well, whoever's at 805, I'll try to call you again in a little bit. Let's see. Um, let's try, uh, let's see. Interesting. So, so we're going to call, um, Heather Lou Morgan now. We'll try Heather Lou Morgan. Hello. Hey, Heather, this is Tim with, uh, Rattle. Do you, uh, want to share a poem? I do. Um, I submitted uh, a week and I'm... I guess you need me to turn on the video. Let's see if that yeah, will work. Yes, yeah, see if you can, if you'd like to. There you go. Hello. Hello. Um, let me, uh, here you go. Now everybody else can see you too. And um, let me see. Heather. I got to find the poem for everybody to read first. Sure. Um, and thank you for this, Tim, the current events. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, I really I really enjoy doing this. Um, it's a lot of fun, although the technical stuff, but a lot to juggle. Half empty, <laughs> I found it. Okay. Um, yeah. And is there anything you want to say about what the poem is about? Yeah, this is my uh, first attempt at the political poem. I usually write ephrastic poetry, mm -hmm. so I responded to uh, the video that I saw um, of the Tulsa, Oklahoma campaign rally on the 20th. Okay, and then it's um, the video it says Trump explains drinking water clip. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't. Uh, I don't. I, I don't know what to say. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say his name. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm um, half half empty. Is your poem? I'll, I'll show it for everybody. Half full, half empty, half full. Two hands, one hand. See, one hand. I can toss it back, toss it over. Toss one back, make you roll over. Break the glass, break your heart, break the nation. We're all apart. Very nice. I love how you um, you start out with a Trump voice, which you can hear in there, and then it, it moves into something more meaningful. Um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. That was once again that was Heather uh, Lou Morgan from uh, Richmond, Virginia. I should have said thanks so much for joining us and sharing that poem. You're welcome. Thank you. I have a good rest of your day. Okay, let me try. Ah, so Greg Bell has just emailed um, a just finished American Requiem. Let's do try to find Greg Bell. Um, hmm. Actually, I'm not. Oh, here's the poem. Okay, and we'll call him up. A whole bunch of people who would like to be on this week. I uh, hope we can get to everybody. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Uh, well, I don't see you yet. Click on your camera button. I hear you. Good to hear you. Yeah, it's, there you go. Oh, here we go. Yeah, good to see you. How are you doing today? You see you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we see you. We see you and hear you well. Um, how are you doing today? Excellent. Oh, I'm doing well, thank you, in this uh, uh, great disruption. Yeah, yeah. And it, I th we're just at the tip of the iceberg, too, unfortunately. I think um, that's clear at this point. Yeah. Um, so Sadly. Yeah. Sad, but sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know if um, you know, we're going to have school in the fall. I don't, probably not. Um, I don't know. It's tough. Anyway. 
Uh, what what is the poem you wanted to share, and what, what's it about? I have it up. Uh, I can show it for people. Okay, I just finished uh, American Requiem. It's a trilogy, and uh, the latest, uh, the last is um, um, uh, shall we say local? And I'll just start with that, and uh, I'd like to read the last. Just one. the third part, you mean? Okay, sure. sure. It's four, it's four pages, so it's, okay. I mean, the whole trilogy is four pages. This is okay. So here's two. part three. I'll I'll put that up for everybody. Okay. Um, okay. So go ahead whenever you're ready. All right. The epigraph directly beneath the tree. A short poem was etched into the concrete seven years ago. The winning entry in a local poetry contest. It speaks of the smart black crows and the rainbow that led us here. Spinning and spinning, the great wide world turns round. Robert Fuller, who turns the opposite direction, a creak in the startled air. His eyes trace the backward move against the question marks, the exclamation points that were so recently his want. No more exuberations. No more his queries eager to understand. Punctuations now come round to periods of an ending. A full stop. Rope creaks in the wind. Unwinding questions demanding answers. How? Why? Who? The authorities answer. Suicide. Sheriff's Department spokesman for Palmdale City Manager, the county coroner, says suicide. But his family say no, no, he was, he is, was too strong, too happy. No, not given to depression. No, this makes no sense. No, something's wrong. But the authorities say suicide, and as everybody of any color here knows from long experience, the authorities always tell us the authorities speak truth. But family and friends, community and fact finders, the press that is yet free, know a black man won't shoot himself in the back. A black man won't hang himself with a sky hook. Demand investigation for if the authorities speak truth so that we all at last might breathe. Thanks so much. And that was uh, Greg Bell reading uh, the third section to his poem, American Requiem. And uh, do, is there any um, updates on that story? I remember that story from a week or two ago. Um, Palmdale's right is not too far from us. Um, is, is there any, um, is there any yes. updates or anything about it? Did they find any more evidence uh, or, or of what happened? It's, um, I haven't seen any. I, I saw an article on the 18th that started, that was a memorial and a... Um, a protest mm -hmm. memorial, if you will, um, and uh, nothing has been forthcoming yet, so far as mm -hmm. I know. Um, that was that was what I that was what I went on. And as a matter of fact, I, I looked back and and found an earlier article by Kevin Baxter, uh, dated the fourteenth, mm -hmm. uh, which is the source of the yeah, epigram. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing that, Craig. I, I appreciate it. Always nice to see you. Uh -huh. Likewise, yeah, have Tim. Have a good rest of your day. Take care. Thank Bye. you. You too. Ciao. Okay. Um, let's see. I hope we have an incoming call, a 360. Let's see who that is. Hey, this is Tim. I know I said I wouldn't answer, but the time's perfect. Who am I talking to? Oh, uh, Diane Knox. Why don't you turn off your, um, your stream I in the background? Will. Yeah, sorry for, for not following protocol, but I was looking for someone to call, and, and the call is coming in, so I figured I'd just answer. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, this is called Deliver Us. Oh, hang on a second. So it, this is, um, this oh. is Diane. I have to find your poem first. Okay. I just sent it. Oh, okay. Um, to um, open mic or to rattle? Open mic. Okay, let me see. Refresh. I'm not seeing it. Let's see. Refresh. Um, well, as we wait for it to come, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to say anything about what it's about? Uh, it's, uh, I was 
just waiting for my mail, and uh, the mail lady drove by, and and uh, it's about her. Okay. Um. Well, I'm not. I'm not seeing it. Um, huh. Uh-huh. Let's see. Um. Yeah, it's not in my inbox. Do you want to just read it? And, and we sure. can listen? Okay. Deliver us. My mail lady just drove by my family room window in her white mail van. Rubber, blue rubber gloved, hands off the wheel, in the air, waving to a beat on her radio, singing with a smile, delivery, coronavirus style. What a joy. I'm going to wander out to check my happy mail. Awesome. Thanks. That's so, it. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing. And that, what was your last name? It was Diane Knox. Diane Knox. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. We have a um, um, the tribute issue uh, section for the fall issue, which we're working on right now, is a tribute to service workers. And so, um, oh. and so we have um, uh, T.R. Paulson is a uh, UPS driver. We have her. And um, nice, nice tribute there yourself. Uh, thanks for, for sharing that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's try this uh, 786 number. I don't know why that poem never showed up, though. Refresh. <laughs> okay, we'll see who's at 786. By the way, when I call you, it'll be at 818-850-7727. Um, that's what'll come up on your caller ID. Um, I think, I know people don't usually answer strange numbers. Hey, this is Tim with uh, Rattle. You do want to share a poem with us today? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Who's, who am I talking to? This is Jeff. This who? Jeffrey Phil. Jeffrey Phil. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I, I I thought we uh, I clicked on you again. My bad. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, thanks for I'm thanks for sh- <laughs> thanks for sharing the poem earlier. Sorry, I uh, I thought it was a number I hadn't called yet. <laughs> no, we, we, I knew, and it was delightful. Yeah. One of the things that I I I I, I left out was was the whole DNA test, but that's another story. Yeah, well, that's there on the poem, but yeah, yeah, thanks so much yeah. for, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Take care, man. Okay, bye. Um, oops, let's see. I guess it was the 805 number we haven't called yet. We'll try that again. Oh, here's Diane's poem, Deliver Us. Maybe um, maybe I put that on screen and read it really quick so you could read it, too. Hey, this is Tim with Rattle. Did you want to share a poem today? Who's this? This is Tim with Rattle. Did you want to share a poem hey, today? Tim. You're live on the air, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Um, sure. Who who am I talking I to? I... Dan Mask. Ah, good to see you. Yeah. Or hear you anyway. Hey. Um Let's see. I, I really liked your poem. Yeah. Do, do you have a chance to t- time to read it? I, I noticed you said you had to leave on the chat window. Well, I, I did, we're having a, we're selling our house, and uh-huh. um, we had to clean the house. So I was like waiting and hoping that you'd call on me, and I said I got to clean the bedroom. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, do you have do you, do you have a minute to read it now? Sure, sure. And it was about uh, read it. yeah, it was about picking Which blueberries. One? Now it's blueberry season where you oh, are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good one. Natural selection. Yeah, I uh, I think my poetry has improved since I found an editor. Mm-hmm. So I'm, it's, it's always nice to get a, a second opinion. I, I like what you're doing on, on here an awful lot. You really are doing a good thing for poets. So I really want to thank you for that. Well, thanks for saying that. I, I'm glad you, you feel that way. You're welcome. Yeah, I really do. So um, here's the poem. It's called Natural Selection, and it's simply about my, my blueberry bushes and the bushes that I went out to a uh, farm to pick berries. Mm-hmm. Um, There's something magical how careful I am, spreading my fingers like wings below a leafy branch, gathering a handful of blueberries, softly clutching the deep blue roundness with a calculated pinch. My forefinger and thumb affirm the feel of ripeness. The other sweetness is born of birdsong, so let me be first to wish you a happy birthday. Silently substantial, 
the deep blue plumpness, plumpness leaves the shape of absence next to the half equals, too green and sour to pick. Thanks so much. And that was Danny Mask, once again, from, um, from Charlotte, North Carolina, reading his poem, Natural thanks. Selection. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us and sharing that. It was a really good yeah. one. I'll talk to you again. Thanks, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See ya. All right. Um, let's see. So it is about time. Let's see. Do we have anybody else? never been on before i think that's all there are a couple of people who are sort of regulars and i really got to go so um, i have to take my dog to that uh, rattlesnake rattlesnake aversion class as i mentioned um but thanks everybody once again for joining us it was an excellent hour of poetry as it always is uh, it's a lot of fun to do these and um, a few think so too um, do click on that like button and share and tell your friends and whatnot um really appreciate that if you can um we do this every Sunday morning at this time. Whatever time it is locally for you is the time that we do it. We also have the uh, Critique of the Week every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, where we go over a poem. And um, this week, um, we're going to do the drawing for the next round of poets. So if you're watching, I'm going to post, make a post on YouTube if you can find it. I've never made a post on YouTube, but there is a uh, posting area. So I'm going to make a post. You can comment below there if you want to um, participate in the Critique of the Week. Um, and if you're following us on Facebook, uh, I'll make a post on Facebook. I'll do both of these probably Wednesday, and then we'll do a random drawing for the next four or five poets that we'll go over poems for on the Critique of the Week. Now on the Rattlecast, this week's guest coming up is um, Ron Kirchie. Um, we interviewed Ron in issue number 42. It was actually the first interview that I did myself. Before then, um, Alan Fox had done all the interviews. Um, and he's also been the uh, keynote speaker at the Wrightwood Literary Festival, so I, I, mean, I know Ron pretty well. Um, he's a really fun, terrific poet and um, a novelist. His newest book is Yellow Moving Van, so we'll be reading from that and some other books and poems too. And then we have the open mic, of course, and um, the prompt for this week. Every, every week we have an open mic at the end of the Rattlecast based on a prompt, and the prompt this week is... Um, um, Write a poem, a three-minute poem. So set a timer for three minutes. Um, and write for three minutes. No editing afterward except for fixing up line breaks and, and, and uh, correcting punctuation and things like that. So uh, write a three-minute poem. Just take three minutes. See what you can do in three minutes. That is our prompt for the week, and we'll read each other's three-minute poems. Um, and that'll be a lot of fun. So I will see you then. Um, in the meantime, have a great rest of your Sunday. Bye. Bye.